In this video on propositional logic, you'll be learning how to form complex sentences. For propositional logic, simple statements are replaced by variables. For example, I like cookies can be replaced with the variable x. It doesn't matter what the variable is as long as it is defined clearly. Complex statements are made by using the four connectives on those simple statements. There are only and exactly four connectives. They are not, and, or, and the last one is if, then. That's a single connective. The first connective is not. We replace that with the symbol called a tilde. Other symbols are the hook or the negation side, but the one that we'll be using is the one in the green box, the tilde. For example, if m equals you like monkeys, then not m equals you don't like monkeys. Another way to say this is that it is not true that you like monkeys. Or, it is not the case that you like monkeys. All of these are different ways of saying not am. Not is also called the negation. Whenever translating sentences into formal notation, we will use the affirmative statements as the variable. For example, for the statement, the bus doesn't arrive at 8 a.m., we could just call the entire statement B. We won't do that. Instead, we'll let the variable B stand for the bus arrives at 8 a.m. That's an affirmative statement. Then we can write the negation of B. It's not true that the bus arrives at 8 a.m. The advantage of this is that it shows us more about the original statement. The bus doesn't arrive at 8 a.m. is better shown by the negation of B than by a single simple statement B. There are ways of combining connectives. If M stands for I like monkeys, then the negation of M is I don't like monkeys, and then the negation of the negation of M is it's not true that I don't like monkeys. Another way to say that that sounds more natural is, I don't not like monkeys. Notice how the, the brackets disappeared. Sometimes it's okay to do that and sometimes not. The second connective is and. For that, we use the symbol from the keyboard called an ampersand. Other symbols used are the wedge or an upside down U. Those are usually called intersections. It means the same thing. All of these are conjunctions. The symbol we'll use is the ampersand. If the variable M stands for I like monkeys and S stands for I like sandwiches, then S and M stands for I like sandwiches and I like monkeys. We can rewrite that more simply as, I like sandwiches and monkeys. Notice how in both cases the word and shows up in the full version. You could also write, I like both monkeys and sandwiches. Or, I like monkeys, I like sandwiches. In the second last case, the word both and and go together. In the last example, the comma replaces the word and. The third connective is or. For this, we usually write a V. Another symbol is a U, and then it's called the union. And this is called the disjunction. The symbol we'll use is the V. 
For example, if m equals I like monkeys and s equals I like sandwiches, then m or s is read as I like monkeys or sandwiches. When we say I like monkeys or sandwiches, we mean either I like monkeys or I like sandwiches. But there's a third possibility. It could also mean that I like both. This is like saying, do you want ketchup or mustard on your sandwich? You may want both. This is different than what's called the exclusive or. When someone says dead or alive, it's not possible for something to be both. This is called the inclusive or. We will always use the inclusive or where it's possible to like both. The fourth connective is if then. For this one, we use a small arrow. Sometimes we use a wedge shape, and these are both called the conditional. From now on, we'll use the arrow. For example, using the same variables, the way that we say this out loud is M implies S. That means, if I like monkeys, then I like sandwiches. We could also write a totally different sentence, S implies M, which means, if I like sandwiches, then I like monkeys. Those two sentences are very different. The first part of a conditional is called the antecedent, and the second part is called the consequent. The antecedent is the condition that has to be met for the consequent to be true. In other words, the first part is the condition, and the second part is the result. For example, consider the sentence, if this is due on Monday, then I'm getting drunk on Friday. The condition is, this is due on Monday. We'll call that D. The consequent, or result, is, I'm getting drunk on Friday. We'll call that F. In logical notation, that's D implies F. Notice how much simpler the logical version is than the original sentence. Here's a summary and a little bit more terminology. First, we have the negation represented by a tilde, which stands for not. Then we've got a conjunction, which we indicate with an ampersand or the word and. In a conjunction, x and y, we call each of the variables conjuncts. x is a conjunct and y is a conjunct. It doesn't matter which one's first. The disjunction is represented by an upside-down V and can be said as OR. In the statement X or Y, each of the variables are called disjuncts. Each one is part of the disjunction, and it doesn't matter which one comes first. Last, we've got the conditional which we indicate with an arrow, for which we say, if, then. For the statement, x implies y, x is the antecedent, and y is the consequent. Here are some practice problems. Translate each of these regular sentences into propositional logic. Remember, make your variable stand for simple affirmative statements. Pause now, and then unpause when you're ready to see the answers. Here are the solutions. For the statement, homework isn't easy, we'll make the variable stand for homework is easy. It's simple and it's affirmative. Then, 
the original s statement becomes the negation of H, or not H. For the statement, he's wanted, dead or alive, we let D stand for he's wanted dead, and we let A stand for he's wanted alive. Then we can rewrite it as D or A. The V stands for the connective or. She is smart and funny gives us the variables S for she is smart and F for she is funny, which we can then write as S ampersand F, which we say S and F. For the statement, if we mean different things, then we will have to fight it out, notice that we've got the connectives if-then in there. We can find the variables in between the words if and then. The first variable stands for we mean different things. Notice that that is a complete statement on its own. We can let y stand for we will have to fight it out also a complete statement. Then the whole sentence gets translated as x implies y, x arrow y. Notice how much more compact and simple the logical notation is. Thank you for watching.